What's up, everyone? Thanks for listening to the WhatCast. Welcome if it's your first time. We hope you have your shots. Not vaccines, just, you know. Like, I don't know, what, what shots would we require, Mike? Definitely rabies. Okay. Um, that's, that's mandatory. And um, the only other shot that I personally require is the uh, feline leukemia vaccine. But other than that, you're good to go. And the shot to the heart. Who? Yeah, but only if you're to blame, Mateo. <laughs> oh, man. So tonight we're going to talk about a specific subject, but uh, consequently uh, we're going to add a few new blank men or man type creatures yes. to our repertoire. More fodder for, for our uh, bullshit wrestling episodes we do. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a new tag team, folks. God, we do. So what what are we going to talk about tonight, Mike? Flying humanoids. Ooh, one of my favorite subjects. Yes, yes. And uh we've got a bit of a variety tonight. This isn't this isn't your normal gargoyle stuff here. Ooh. No gargoyle man, we already did that. No, yeah, we did. Kind of. It was also Mothman. Yeah. There's so many of these Mothman things out there. And it's just like given different names. Like there was the Owl Man, there's Moth Man. Here, the I'm I'm about to tell you about one who's been called Eagle Man. Eagle Man. Eagle Man. Oh my god! <laughs> I gotta tell Eagle Bones about this. <laughs> so, Eagle Man. There's a bunch of flying humanoid sightings from Chile. So these go back decades in fact that they go back far enough that there was a book written about them in the 80s a journalist actually wrote a book about them wow yeah his name was Osvaldo Murray and uh, his book was called Los Seres de Luz which translates to the beings of light and he just wrote about all these flying humanoid sightings um but the the one the eagle man one specifically um uh, this occurred in 1997 January 9th and uh, there was a 57 year old man named Juan Castro who was a farmer from Paloma Chile and uh he was heading home on horseback in the afternoon after his uh boss had sent him to inspect this patch of wildflowers for some reason but he checked on the wildflowers, gets on his horse, and he's riding back towards the farm. And upon approaching a crossroad, his horse became spooked, and this black f- figure just flew overhead. And his horse reared up, threw Juan to the ground, and the horse just bolted off and ran down the road, leaving Juan by himself. He said that the creature appeared to come from either behind or maybe it was perched on top of this nearby mulberry bush. And as they approached the crossroad, it just took off from this bush and like flew over their head. And as he was watching it, you know, once he fell off and and got back up, realized his horse left him, he was watching this thing fly away. And it flew higher into the air at that point and flew off towards a nearby Pulmo Hill, I I believe is how it's pronounced. But the way that he described it, he said it, it, it was like an amalgamation between an eagle and a man, and it was covered in tar black feathers, but it also wore a cape, and the cape itself was also lined with with tar black feathers. And he said the creature's face seemed to have the feathers on it as well and it also had two big red glowing eyes just like fucking mothman or owl man yeah no kidding that's that's very weird but this cape huh yeah a cape 
That's that's a new one. Apparently a tailored cape. Yeah. In thinking about this description, I I was thinking to myself, so he's he's covered in feathers and he's wearing a cape that's lined with the same feathers. Like, does he go around collecting his own feathers and being like, oh, this is going to make such an awesome cape? <laughs> like, it, it, that's like it's it's like going around collecting hair that you've lost off your head and like making a craft with it. Right. It's fucking weird, man. Eagle man, you're a weird ass dude. <laughs> Our next song. <laughs> yeah, that's the title of the song. Eagle man, you're a weird ass dude. Um, but the the other thing that that kind of separates this from other Mothman sort of sightings is as the creature was flying away, its legs were like dangling under its body, and he said it appeared to be wearing boots. What so? Uh, yeah, so like uh, apparently Mothman knows a guy who can special make clothes for cryptids. Now, was this thing doing? Was it flying? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he said it flew overhead, and that's what spooked his horse because it was it was low enough that his horse freaked out. Um, and then after he fell off and stood up, he watched it, and, and it like rose higher up into the air. Wow. Okay. So I got to ask you this. I mean, one of the reasons why I love the flying humanoid stuff is because it's almost like the shadow people thing. And remember that documentary that showed those drawings of all the different reported ones. Yeah. And it's just this huge yep. variety. And the same thing goes with this flying humanoids. Now we've heard of uh, some phantom attackers that dress weird, wear boots and capes and hats and stuff like that. But this yep. is this is a flying humanoid wearing a clearly a tailored cape, and now with boots. Uh, this, what the fuck is going on here? What the hell is that? I don't know. But he said that he, like this, it, it freaked him out. He said it, it was out of sight, but he was, he, he was so afraid that it was going to come back that he just took off running. And uh, he said, he later recalled um, to this day that he thinks that he saw the devil that day. That That was the devil. But kind of along, you know, to to get back to what you were saying with these like weird creature, like like Spring Hill Jack, for instance, he was wearing tailored suits, you know, and a cape, and uh, he his his deal though was that he could jump really far and breathe fire, and a lot of people like when when you. Typically, when you hear stories about spring Jack, it's usually tied into uh, some sort of person who is pranking it. And very rarely do I even see it mentioned as being a cryptid. You know, it, it's usually thought to be uh, someone just, just doing a prank of some sort. But that doing a prank doesn't explain what, what these people were, were si- seeing. You know, they were they were having somebody breathe fire into their face and then jump over a wall. That's not exactly <laughs> something that was within the the capabilities at the time. So it, it it does make me wonder if like it it's some sort of uh something similar to that. Maybe maybe it's some sort of trickster deity. I don't fucking know, man. That is a weird one. It's a cape and boots, and it's fine. Yeah. It's doing something that a human can't do. So, right, we got to We can we can exclude that right there. It's automatically doing something humans can't do. So it's not a do. Right, <laughs> but that's weird. So there, there's these other sightings that that there was a flap of sightings that happened in uh, 2013, uh, primarily centered around the end of September, um, beginning September 29th, and it extended for a few days. People were seeing this other flying humanoid but the the interesting thing about this one is that people said it looked like it was a humanoid manta ray what? and the wings extended from the upper part of its body and connected all the way down at the lower part so i'm wondering if maybe it's the same thing just seen from a greater distance so they weren't able to make out the feathers and maybe this cape thing wasn't a cape at all, but part of its body or vice versa. Maybe what they're seeing, it was something with a cape and they're just seeing it all connect. So they're saying it looks like a, a manta ray. 
Yeah, that's such a distinctive description. That's a, a, only one thing looks like a manta ray. So, wow. Yeah, yeah. And um, these these one the people that saw it estimated the size of it to be around two meters tall. So it's a, a little bigger than six feet tall. And um, it was seen the first the first time it was seen was 9 p.m. September 29th in Santiago, Chile, near a place called Bustamante Park. And the creature was seen flying from tree to tree. And it would just kind of like jump out of the tree and, and fly with its manta ray costume and then land on the tree and do it again and again. There was another witness who actually saw it that, that night and he saw it with his wife. Um, they both witnessed this thing sitting in one of the towers of the San Francisco church. And from their vantage point, it looked like this thing was sitting there eating a dog. Whoa. And the dude even said, I, I would be willing to bet if someone went up there right now, there would be remains because this thing was just munching on a dog in the tower. I mean, it's a, it's a weird claim to make. And again, I mean, hopefully non-human activity. Right, one one would hope. But it, there were several witnesses that saw it um, at the end of September in 2013. But like I said, these the sightings of these these particular sorts of flying humanoids uh, seem to, to pop up for, for uh, decades in Chile. Um, maybe sometime we'll, we'll do a full episode devoted to... Um, the, the flying hot humanoids of Chile. Uh, if I can get my hand on an English translation of that book, I'll, I would love to read it. Um, I don't even know if... I, I honestly didn't look to see if, if there was an English translation out there, but I'd be willing to take a look. Um, but yeah, that there... Uh, I, I, it, like, there's no real ties to like uh, any significant disasters or anything i know people always like to point to that and i'm i may have said this before but i'm pretty sure everyone that says that the mothman is a harbinger of disaster is just pulling that idea from the movie itself from the mothman prophecies movie because that's like the only other than the the collapse of the silver bridge like there's n any anywhere else where there's sightings of this, there's never anything fucking disastrous that happens. I remember so, that I'm, show. God, what was it called? Uh, about that, those fucking. They ended up all going. Well, that dude went crazy. Paranormal state or something like that. Do you remember that show? Um, was that like a ghost hunter show? Yeah. Yeah. Well, all things paranormal, I guess. But they were when they were talking about Mothman, they were able to link Mothman sightings around like almost most modern natural disasters like the tsunami and all that shit even down to september 11th yeah but is that is that was that for real or was that just being like oh there was there was a big bird sighting this day and uh, like what it would i what people are usually saying is places where there's extended sightings you know like like at point pleasant there was a fucking right. year-long campaign of this thing fucking <laughs> showing up you know he was making his rounds um and then like but we we talked fairly recently about the um lake michigan mothman and i only got through like 20 years worth of sightings i didn't even get into the stuff beyond the 2000s uh of, of sightings and and where where's the huge massive disaster that that is supposed to happen on Lake Michigan. Hmm. You know, I mean, sure, a lot of these sightings happened in Detroit, and and I, I guess you could make an argument that Detroit itself is a disaster, but is that what he's there for? Like, hey, I'm showing up in Detroit because this is a disaster. I, I don't think that's the case. But maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Maybe Mothman, much like God, works in mysterious ways. <laughs> Maybe he's just pointing it out. It's gotten to a point where he's like, guys, we got to organize this. Yeah, like, Mothman, if you're listening, can you just, like, fly over the places and, like, point? Point at it. D don't just sit there being <laughs> creepy. Like, like just point directly at it and say, this, 
this right here. And, uh, you know, somebody there's, there's going to be somebody that, that sees that and is like, Oh shit. Mothman's telling us there's going to be something going on there. We're, we're, we, we understand now Mothman. Just, just tell us where it is. Just tell us. Speak freely. Oh, Mothman. Yeah. Where, where were you when the Titanic sank Mothman? Where was the Titanic Mothman? He thought I was there. It was just nighttime and nobody saw me. <laughs> it was the middle of the ocean and everyone else was kind of busy. So they, uh, they missed, they missed it. You got glowing red eyes, dude. Like make use of them. It's the middle of fucking night in the ocean. There's not a whole <laughs> lot of light out there. He's all, everyone, everyone yeah. was drunk. Okay. They were insane. Yeah. He, yeah, he was, uh, he, he's full of shit is what he is. Fuck you, moth man. You <laughs> suck. You suck as a harbinger of disaster. I don't buy it. I think you're a lost zoo animal. I've seen that uh, theory brought up a few times recently. Yeah, no, I, I don't really, I don't really uh, buy into that theory. I, I just think it's fun. Me too. And then I, I just want to attribute like every cryptid sighting to just like escapees from some weird fucking galactic zoo that somehow they just keep ending up here. Or maybe that maybe it's like part of some weird uh galactic reality show where where they just teleport in some weird creature to make people see it and then it's it's like candid camera but with cryptids just let's watch the humans freak out. Bigfoot pops in. Oh my god and then like uh, on galactic TV the the host cuts in and and they have Bigfoot on. They all laugh about the stupid humans. It's oh god, it sounds like a great time, right? Like there's a leaderboard with all the cryptids. They're announcing yeah. like a Bigfoot's been keeping it strong for 120 years. Yeah, that you got you got Mothman. He's like, if they could just give me a consistent name, just I would be there, guy. I would be there. <laughs> but they they don't. Everywhere I go, I get a different fucking name. My I'm not even a man. I'm not even a man. Do I look like a man to you? Bigfoot pats him on the back. It's okay, little guy. Who are you called little? <laughs> Get off me. Don't look at me. There's a thousand variants of you, Bigfoot. Yeah, but they all have big feet. You know it's Bigfoot. He he makes sure to leave to leave the tracks. It's like his signature. They can call him whatever they want, but the signature says it all. <laughs> Mothman doesn't have a signature. What's what's he do? Got glowing red eyes. That's cool. He got glowing red eyes, but so so back in 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 57 he was or 97 he was uh trying to make a name for himself. He's like, "You know what? I'm wearing I'm fucking dressing up now. I'm wearing a cape, throwing <laughs> on some boots. They're no more of this blank man stuff. They're going to know me now. Oh my god, it's an eagle man." God damn it, I'll eat you all. <laughs> eagle? What the fuck, eagle? Uh, yeah. What kind of eagle has red glowing eyes, you son of a bitch? I hate you. I hate you all and I will shit on your house. I'm wearing cowboy boots, god damn it. <laughs> Look at the fucking spurs. Uh, I feel bad for him. Yeah. I don't I don't even want to call him Mothman or Eagle Man anymore. I, his name is Jeb. That's, you know what? That's a good one. We got to come up with a universal name to and give Jeb him some, the Cryptid. <laughs> yeah, Jeb the Cryptid. <laughs> give him an identity. There you go, buddy. If anyone else has a better idea, leave me a message in the Discord and tell me why. But until then, all Mothman creatures will be Jeb the Cryptid. <laughs> Jeb with a capital or with an exclamation mark after the after the B, just like Jeb Bush. Jeb. The cryptid. You have to yell his name. Yeah, it's mandatory. Any other pronunciation is seen as disrespectful by Jeb. Right, right. Unless voted on by our patrons that he should have another name. In which case, <laughs> suck nuts, Jeb. You're going to be whatever they say, but for right now, you're Jeb. But it, but enough about Mothmans. Do you... <laughs> Let's go from Moth, Eagle, Owl, Mans... To to another man that we've talked about on this show before. Do you remember Bibendum Man? Oh yeah, that's uh fresh in my mind. That's that whole fucking story about all those sightings was just so weird to me. It just you hear about the uh, gray aliens and you can relate to them a little bit. You I mean you've talked about how like that's just probably like a 
super spaced aged human that's been living in a hyperspace for millions of years and that's what it ends up looking like there's some connection there but this entity is just so flipping weird well what if i could make him weirder you <laughs> can do it scar my mind <laughs> all right so this story comes from uh july 1971 in uh, marshall county um fuck where was it hold on one second marshall county fuck i'm going yeah Marshall County, Minnesota. So this story, the story goes, the the witness whose name only goes by Roger. So I, I don't have a full name, but the witness Roger was walking along his property in the through the wood lot that was behind the barn. On well, I I say his property, his parents' property. He was a, a kid at the time, and he he was basically just running around out back with his dog Bonnie who was who was a collie so it's you know he's basically Roger and Lassie running around um but at some point while they were walking through the wood lot Bonnie became agitated and started barking and just took off running towards the edge of the property towards the small field and Roger was left behind calling for her trying to get her to stop but she kept on running, and in an attempt to catch up with her, Roger started running as well and ran ran off in the direction that Bonnie had went. As he approached the field, though, Roger saw that Bonnie was now laying down on the ground and looking up at the sky. At that point, Roger noticed this yellow light in the sky, and uh, the light kind of started coming towards their direction, and Bonnie barked a few more times, and then got up and bolted into the woods. Um, at this point, Roger started to become frightened, um, but the light moved toward him and eventually stopped right above him. And at, at the point that he was ready to take off running, his body became paralyzed. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've got a quote here from Roger. And uh, he says, I looked at the light and started to make out a shape. I have always said that it was a balloon man. It was round in the body and segmented legs and arms. The head was a bright yellow light. I couldn't see a face, just a bright, blinding light. It hovered for a minute, and then it moved towards me, and then it moved right in front of me. I'd say it was eight feet tall and very wide. There was an intense heat coming from it also. I had trouble breathing and was very uncomfortable. Then it started to hover and circle around me. I thought I was going to pass out. Then suddenly it just disappeared, simply vanished. As soon as it did, I dropped to the ground and started shivering. Whoa, that's scary, dude. Yeah, he actually, he did draw a picture of this thing. And oh. um, it was basically Bubenda Man, but with, instead of a head... It was this big glowing light. I gotta see that picture. Uh, just look up uh, Minnesota Balloon Man, and you should be able to find it pretty easily. But once once he uh, once he dropped to the ground, the paralysis had kind of been removed from his body, and and he tried to stand up, but was too weak to stand. And in the distance, he heard his mother calling him. And it was then that he noticed that Bonnie was laying next to him and was barking in response to his mom yelling. Uh, so following the barking, his mom found him and he was basically on a heap, in a heap on the ground. Um, and she was unable to help him back to his feet, so she had to run back to the house, get his older brothers to come in and help carry him home. Um, once they got him home, he ended up, uh, he, he was so weak, he couldn't even get out of bed, and he ended up being bedridden for a week. Um, and he also had this red rash that covered all of his upper body. So they called the doctor in, and the doctor checked him out, looked at the rash and, and his weakness, and the, the, the doctor's reasoning for, for this whole thing was that uh, Roger had an acute allergic reaction to poison sumac, which uh, Roger claims is complete bullshit because he's been, you know, basically living in that area his whole life, and 
uh, has never had this reaction to to poison sumac before or after this incident. Kind of coincidentally, Bonnie also ended up dying shortly after the whole event took place due to a strange heart ailment. Her heart just stopped and she died. Hmm. Like a doggy heart attack. Very strange. Yeah. The, um, I don't know, man. The, the, Vivenda man's fucking weird enough. But then you give him the ability to fly and project light and heat from his face. Like, do all can can all Babenda men do that, or was this a specific breed of Babenda man? Yeah. Like when I when I first started reading this story, in my head, it was um when, when he said that he first saw that yellow light in the sky. In my head, I was thinking that he was seeing a UFO. But what he was seeing was this fucking flying balloon man approaching him. That's so scary. That's yeah. way I don't I don't know why, but that's scarier than a UFO showing up. Right, yeah. So no craft at all, just this guy. <laughs> yeah. You just you see this light and then he just fucking flies in, paralyzes you, burns the shit out of you, and then takes off. I wonder if that that because he paralyzed him and then he it sounds like he scanned him, so he's like floating around him with this light. And he said it was an intense heat that he was feeling that was making it hard to breathe and was making him feel weak. Like, what if this was like some sort of like energy drain, and that and it was just like literally pulling the life force out of him, and then it had it got enough, and then it took just popped out and left him to deal with the consequences, and that's why he was he fell to the ground shivering. And why he couldn't get out of bed for a week. He had to, to regain his energy. I believe stolen. it, man. And maybe that's why the dog's heart stopped. Because it took an, it took energy from the dog. And since dogs have a shorter lifespan than us, that, that's all it could take. Hmm. That, that's crazy. So that that uh, hmm, that'd be, could be considered an, an attack. I would say so. I would absolutely say so. I mean, you yeah. paralyze the dead, but but I mean, really, what do you consider an attack? You could you could consider any any abduction scenario an attack, right? But this is like on Earth, like yeah, <laughs> not in a ship. Well, uh, it's scary, man, and and who knows? Like, because he was on his property, like because he, in his recollection, he's being scanned by this thing, and then it just disappears, and he falls on the ground, and then here's his mom. Like, I wonder if maybe his mom was calling him while that happened, and his mom's voice is what scared this thing off. Like, he's like, oh, shit, somebody's coming, gotta get out of here, Psh, gone. Right. Like, you see a kid and his dog, and that's like, he might have been, because, I mean, this thing's like eight feet tall. So you see a kid in there and his dog, you're gonna just be like, oh, that's a fucking easy target right there. But right. then you hear somebody else coming, and if you're... Fucking balloon man, who knows like really how resistant you are to things. So so you're just like, fuck, I'm getting out of here. There's more than one of them. Gone. Psh. So maybe his mom saved his life. Who knows? If he had been further out or or away from people or his mom didn't call him, maybe he would have been drained completely. Right, yeah. Two more seconds and that was it for that guy. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? It's creepy though. I've never heard of anything like this. Yeah, that's bizarre. So scary. Yeah, made, you made Bavendum way more scarier now. <laughs> I know. Like, they all have this ability. All the other witnesses, they got off light. Like, they just got, <laughs> like, a, a weird story. Like, oh, shit, I saw fucking Michelin Man. Or I saw the fucking Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Yeah, well, you didn't see him flying, shooting fucking death beams from his face. So consider yourself lucky. It didn't cost you your dog. Yeah, he didn't take your dog, that bastard. Well, I wanted to check out some stuff, do a little digging on flying humanoids, and I found something right away that caught my interest. And it's uh, another man that we can add to the... Oh my God, so we got, we've got we got three different mans, potentially four different if we call one Manta Ray Man. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that seems Manta Ray Man. It's, yeah. it's going to be one that we should have had by now, or... Or, you know, okay. I mean, yeah, so yeah, we'll Is see. Is it Seagull Man? <laughs> Cockatiel Man? Yeah. 
this comes from an article that I think it was written in 2013, and it's uh, an anonymous writer for writing for a, a site called the San Antonio Current, and it reported that they had received a report from, quote, a leading UFO organization about a strange sighting made by a local family in 2009. And they said that a mother was standing in her driveway while she was on, a, on her cell phone when she suddenly spotted what she described as a large winged humanoid flying in the sky. She called it a Batman. She ran into her house and yelled for her husband and son to come out and concur. Was it, wait, wait. She saw Batman? <laughs> Basically. Okay. It, was it was it Michael Keaton Batman? Was it Christian Bale? Which, which... <laughs> it was West. What a twist. It was Adrian Toomes. Oh, my God. <laughs> but when they finally got, got all back to the driveway, uh, when they all got back to the driveway, they were able to re spot this Batman flying away, which they all observed until it flew you out of sight. Stop. You got to stop saying it. We're going to get sued by DC. I know, right? Man bat. We're, we're going to... No, nope, fuck. they got that too. Call, call it bat guy. Bat guy. The bat flyer man. Or bat, bat humanoid. Because maybe it's, maybe it's a woman bat thing. Yeah, yeah I know. you know. Wait, I, I wait mean, I don't assume. know. I, I yeah I've I've I personally am not familiar with cryptid genitals in the way that I would like to be, so I can't comment on whether or not it's male or female at this juncture. I at least want my bachelor's on cryptid junk before I'll comment. Thank you. Yeah, at least my bachelor's degree in in cryptid junkology. <laughs> yeah, but I I like this story because it has supposedly you know multiple witnesses and a prolonged observation. And they stuck with that description, but I don't like that the family refuses to identify themselves or even conduct any type of official interview. So, so like, what, did they whisper it to someone in, in fucking secret, and then that's how it got out? I, I guess they just reported it anonymously to whatever this... They wrote it on a piece of paper, <laughs> folded it up like a fucking paper airplane, and just shot it out the window. And there's like, where did this paper airplane with, with a message about the monster come from? I don't know. It came from somewhere over there. And, and there's like 12 houses and who the fuck knows who threw that paper airplane. I guess I it was reported by to this UFO organization this th that they had mentioned in the beginning. What did they call it? A leading UFO organization. Wait. Did, <laughs> so they didn't even they didn't even say who the UFO organization was. They just said a quote leading ufo organization an anonymous family made a tip to this sounds like creepy pasta are you creepy pastaing me well see that's one thing uh I, I like to do now is when i come across one of these weird sightings like this is i like to see if something like this belongs there and sure enough i came across the houston batman oh, the houston batman yes first reported on june 18th 1953 Oh, I was gonna say, did they make any? Uh, did they make any holy so and so Batman jokes? But this would have been before the '60s Batman. So yeah, okay, okay. Now there's a couple ways that that this is reported. Uh, its first one I came across was Hilda Walker, Judy Meyer, and Howard Phillips reported seeing a um, a man with wings like a bat perched on a nearby tree, and. So I went to look some stuff up on this, and I actually found the original article that's reporting this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it. Okay, it says, uh, Five persons, all of whom live in the same house, complained to police they saw a combination of Superman and Captain Midnight perched in an oak tree outside what? their home early Who Thursday. Who the fuck is Captain Midnight? <laughs> Old old school, old school stuff. Wow. Uh, it's a cross between... What a fucking... Wow. Okay. I like I that. Liked that the... just, yeah, that, that completely... I, I wish I knew who Captain Midnight was, but just describing a cryptid as looking like Superman is, is fucking crazy. Dude, do a Google search of Captain Midnight. All right, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> well, what the... So, so this thing was wearing red and blue then, I'm, I'm guessing, because that's kind of what the commonalities are between Superman and Captain Midnight. They both wear red and blue. 
Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I only breeze through this article quick, but you're going to you'll enjoy the, some similarities. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. So this uh, combination of Superman and Captain Midnight perched in an oak tree outside their home early Thursday and said that he appeared in the light of a mysterious rocket and a second aerial display. Police said they were investigating the stories, but admitted they were not equipped to handle such phenomena as the five persons described. Miss Hilda Walker, 23, accompanied by her husband Lloyd, was the first to report the affair to authorities. She said it was 2.30 a.m., and because it was so hot, her husband, the 14-year-old daughter of the landlady, and herself were all sitting on the porch when the entire yard seemed to be wrapped in a heavy shadow. All of a sudden, this shadow settled in a tree, she said. We looked up and saw the Batman. He was balancing himself on a tree limb, and there was a dim gray light all around him. She said the creature was about six and a half feet tall, wearing a black cape, skin-tight dark pants, quarter-length boots, and looked like a white man. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. This, this guy, he's, he's fucking trying, man. He's, he's trying to get his name out there. Quote, I can see him plainly and can see he had big wings folded under his shoulders, she said. Walker and young Lady Myers, daughter of Miss Vivian Myers, all agreed in respects. They said after the Batman perched in a tree for a few moments while they sat paralyzed and watched, a mysterious white flame and smoke shot from behind him and a burning object like a flying paintbrush scooted across the, the horizon. Fuck? What? And the Batman faded from view. Miss Meyer says she got home just in time to see the flying paintbrush scoot across the sky. Another rumor, age 71, said he saw the weird shadowy fellow in the tree. He said merely went back in and went to bed. The walkers agreed it couldn't have been their imagination and said that they were so upset they were thinking about returning to Brian where they had just moved from three months ago. So that's why I was shocked to hear your, your uh, dude to have a cape in Boots and mine, and mine's got some slacks on. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Huh. I'm telling you, man, this, this thing that keeps being called a man of some sort, he's, he's, he's there. People keep thinking it's different things. It's the same guy. It's the same fucking thing. But yeah, but so where do we put this guy? Where do we put this thing? I mean, it's not a moth, man. This, that's a creature. And then we, we talked about the, uh, that we did but the... maybe Mothman's not a creature. Maybe it's misidentified. Maybe they just didn't see the fucking boots. Maybe he acquired the boots left. After... Oh, wait, no. Because this would have been before. Maybe he lost the boots and then got a new pair in the 90s. Well, that's, was... that's why he's, he's making his way across the country looking for boots. I lost my boots in the 50s. <laughs> and it, my feet have been cold ever since. And he was in West Virginia. Because it's you know typically pretty pretty decent weather wise, and he's like, you know what, my bear tootsies can can be free here, <laughs> but but then he had to move on after the bridge collapsed. Like fuck, no one's gonna want a big cryptid around. They're gonna blame me because he knows people are dicks and they'll do that. And they did. So and they did. So he had to uh, fly out west in search of boots. And a magical cape. So along his travels, he collected every feather that he shed in this big fucking plastic garbage bag that he just slung over his shoulders and flew with. And and I'm not even going to lie. For a while, he was using that plastic bag as a cape. He didn't know any better. But he finally found a... He, what happened was he met a guy, right? He met a guy, and the guy's like, listen... I can help you out here. And then they, they made this deal. He made him these custom boots, this fucking sweet cape. And the the deal was that this guy wanted to prank fucking Juan on his way home. And that's why his boss <laughs> sent him to get the fucking flowers. His boss was the cryptid tailor. That was the whole oh thing. Oh, my God. Yeah. So so his boss fucking sends Juan. He's like, oh, watch, watch this. All right. Juan. Juan, I need you to check out those wildflowers. And he's like, dude, these fucking wildflowers, it's the same wildflowers that are there. He's like, Just go check them out. See if there's any new wildflowers. And he's like, oh, this is fucking bullshit. But I get to ride my horse. It'll be cool. And then he sends this guy. He's like, all right, go hide behind the mulberry bush. And as he's coming up, jump out. And it's a crossroad, so he's going to think he's the devil. 
Oh, God. It's fucking classic. Classic Juan's boss. I don't know what his name was, but, you know, Juan's boss. That's that's the way he does it. crazy guy. Yeah. Building suits for cryptids, man. I mean, well, we got to link the... I mean, like you did earlier, th- this type of, of cryptid, this one having clothes on, <laughs> to like the Spring Hill Jack, or the, what's the uh, goddamn, sure. why can't I think Spanko? of you? Spanko? Spanko, yeah. Uh, Stuff how like do that. you forget Spanko? I know. It's motherfucking Spanko! I was just uh, doing a bunch of research on Spanko for the that VR museum I made, and uh, there was I found some other stuff on this other character. I forget what it's called now. I'm... I'm um, it's because he was like slapping Tommy or something like that, or knocking Tommy, and he would just go behind chicks and blast him in the back of the fucking head with a piece yeah, of wood. And then there was the one who uh, had the needle in the rose that would stab. Yeah, he'd, he'd have girls smell the flower and then stab him in the face. I don't remember his name either. But I found this article that was talking about the Houston Batman, and they they brought up the same thing: the Phantom Attacker, uh, Phantom Attacker connection, and they listed some. Uh, articles that mention phantom attackers in the same area at the same time and i I didn't get to second source these i ran out of time but they mentioned the lubbock evening journal published an article on may 22nd 1953 phantom phantom attacker strikes in full view of officers about he attacked a girl named betty lee jamison and knocked her to the ground and just ran away uh the mexia daily news june 12th 1953 only a week before the batman sighting a woman was pulled out of her car by a phantom attacker and he ran away. And again, like we talked about just the other week, I think, about how all these phantom attackers, they never get caught. They just run away. And or, I mean, this one with two cops right in front of them or got jump away. over walls. Yeah. The Galveston Daily News reported a phantom attacker, the El Paso Herald, April 13th, 1953. This a phantom attacker would rob people, but he would stun them first by... Uh, blasting it with a flash of light to the face. I guess that's why they call them phantom attackers. I, but see, these in these cases, they just they just saw Batman flying around with his fancy boots and cape, so he's not attacking anybody. It just again, it's such a, a, a an area where there's such a variety of these things, and this one's just a another addition to being weird, just flying away with boots on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then the lady said that he she he she was able to say. Or see that it was a white dude. <laughs> he forgot to wear his mask this time. He's like, fuck, I forgot my mask. Shit, 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 shit. All right, I got to do this anyway. <laughs> I got to no, do that's, this that's anyway. The thing. Yeah, because his mask is typically, he's got this black mask with the big reflective red eyes on it. And, and he forgot it this time. He's like, fuck, what am I going to do here? What am I going to do? All right, well, who's going to believe, who's going to believe a fucking white faced Mothman, more like nobody, but you know, she she saw his face and she's like, "That is a white dude." And he's like, "Fuck!" <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have done this without my mask. I'm turning into a glowing paintbrush. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Glowing paintbrush powers activate. Whoa. <laughs> God, is this an unknown entity or just like a very misunderstood first superhero testing out his inventions? <laughs> I think that this is a sentient glowing paintbrush that projects a humanoid figure. That's what I think. <laughs> the The humanoid isn't even real. The The glowing paintbrush is the only reality here. Right. He just wants to make friends, but his like warped uh, and twisted un- misunderstanding of our culture is that he's just like, you know what will be cool? If I just make him all jet black with a feathery cape and some boots. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, this was before like, fucking Sesame Street and Saturday morning cartoons when you could like, you know, tell people you're friendly by some fucking song and dance. Like who's not going to love a glowing paintbrush that can fly? Like everybody's going to be into that. And if he was dancing across the sky, like I'm a flying paintbrush. Oh my God. And then people are like, Oh shit. Look at that. See you dancing fly glowing paintbrush thing. And then we world peace instantly. Cause it's, fucking adorable thank you for listening to the what cast you can find us on twitter instagram facebook itunes and youtube enjoy the podcast get yourself a what cast t-shirt or a sticker pack who was that dude on that one episode 
try the links in Homie's page. All this and more can be found at www.thewatcasters.com. Thanks again for listening and have a great week.